ruin my sister's only birth experience? I'll make sure you never forget her. When I was 14 and my oldest sister, Sarah, was 22 we found out that she was pregnant with Paul, her boyfriend of 4 years. They immediately got engaged and they were really happy. For a time. Sarah had a horrible pregnancy, about 16 to 18 weeks and the wonder of creating a human life evaporated within her. She developed hyperemesis, which if you don't know is really bad morning sickness, she was constantly in pain, she developed gestational diabetes, and just all around hated the experience. Around this time Paul, the then fiancé, started getting sick of the complaining. I believe the argument was your body is built to do this, it can't be that bad. Sarah was due around Valentine's Day and Paul's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Doe, were very excited, both about the grandkid and the fact that he could be born on a holiday. She was very against that and really really hoped that her son wouldn't be born on a holiday, even one as small as Valentine's Day, her birthday sometimes falls on Easter and she hates it, because it might make him feel that his day isn't very much about him. Well, Mrs. Doe says something like well if you name him Valentine or Valentino then that'll make the day even more special to him. Again, my sister hated the idea. She thought it was tacky, he'd be bullied for it, and just really didn't like the name Valentino. Paul loved it, but agreed to go with a more average name like Daniel or Jared. Fast forward to February and she was ready to get this over with. Sarah had officially been put on bed rest because while standing or walking her blood pressure took unexpected spikes and dips. I look back now and goodness do I feel bad for her. She was doing her best to avoid giving birth on Valentine's Day because, again, she didn't want him born on a holiday. Unfortunately, births happen when they happen and that baby was going to come on Valentine's Day whether she wanted him to or not. I remember waiting out in the waiting room with my dad, brothers, and Paul who couldn't stand to be in the delivery room because it was gross. I was so mad that he could have gone in but wouldn't because he thought my sister was gross while giving birth, whereas I had to stay outside because I was too young to go in with my mom and other sister. Dad went home with the youngest two brothers while the oldest, Zeke, stayed to watch me because I refused to leave. 16 hours after Sarah went into labor my little nephew was officially part of the family on the evening of Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, Sarah was not okay. She had to have an emergency cesarean section and while doing the operation discovered that the back of her uterus, facing her spinal cord, had a very large and very severe, thankfully non-cancerous, tumor. When I say large I mean it was twice the size of a standard uterus. The doctors were shocked and didn't understand why nobody had noticed it on an ultrasound. It accounted for her severe back pain and blood pressure issues. The doctors immediately went in for more surgery to remove the tumor, but sadly ended up having to perform a full hysterectomy. This meant that my nephew would be Sarah's only child. Now while Sarah was in for surgery Paul was taking care of everything baby related to make sure his son was okay. In my 14-year-old self's memory I remember him being suitably distraught, but I didn't really pay him much mind and spent my time in the waiting room with my mother and other sister. Zeke, however, wanted to be a good future brother-in-law and make sure that Paul was okay. He found Paul filling out the baby paperwork on his own looking, in my brother's words, like he had not a single worry in his mind. Zeke asked why Paul didn't wait for Sarah to fill out the paperwork as she should have been out of surgery within the hour, and Paul said that he just wanted her to get her rest and heal. That checked out with Zeke, as he was 16 and didn't know any better at the time. Now I know what you're probably thinking. No, he wouldn't. He knows how much she hates that name. And still, she'd need to sign the paperwork too. My fellow peoples have read it, I regret to inform you that Paul forged Sarah's signature on the paperwork and waited until she was out of surgery to hand said paperwork over. My sweet nephew, who was born on Valentine's Day, was named Valentino on his first official birth certificate. I still to this day don't know why Paul and his family were so insistent about the name. He had even picked out a different one with my sister. And before you ask, no he was never brought up on forgery charges because his parents were witnesses to her signing the papers, even though they only got there at the last minute. So Sarah dumped him and got her son's name changed a month later. She was willing to do split custody with him because that's her son's father and she wants the kid to know him, but Paul vanished and she never heard anything back, which seemed weirdly out of character to us. Until a mutual friend on Facebook was tagged in his wedding pictures six months later. Paul had apparently started cheating on her not long after she got pregnant. Sarah was livid but there wasn't much she could do so she filed for child support and continued to live her best life. Until six years later.